Good morning, everyone. How are you all? Good morning. Uh, my name is Nada McKenney, and I'm from Cisco Infrastructure Software Marketing, and I'm joined for this session by, by Bob Kotkade from uh, Cisco Product Management. This is a product and solution overview PSO session, and the topic is innovations and networking, where we're going to talk about a lot of the DNA capabilities you've been hearing about throughout the conference so far. The agenda is broken in basically two sections. Um, Vibov's going to start it off by covering all the exciting capabilities you've heard about in other sessions and keynotes, uh, software-defined access, assurance, encrypted traffic analytics. Uh, and importantly, he's going to be doing a demo to show how those capabilities are coming to life through DNA Center. And within that demo, or as part of it, he'll also talk about some customer customers who are using these capabilities now to give you a little a sense of, of these, these um, uh, technologies in action. Then I'm going to come back and talk about uh, how, how you consume these capabilities, how do you access these capabilities through Cisco One software and a couple other DNA subscription uh, offers as well. And importantly, I'll talk about what the value differences are between them. Before I hand it over to Vibov, I'll just say what you've probably seen in all the other sessions. Uh, we'll stay after for questions, but if you have questions after this, if you find this session in your Cisco events little app, there's, a, there's an option as you look at that to join the discussion, and you'll be added to a WebEx team room. We'll be monitoring that up through June 18th, so even after this is over, feel free to ask questions. Um, we'd, be, we'd be glad to help. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Vibov for the first part of the agenda. All right, thanks, Nada. And uh, so I'll just uh, give you a little flavor of, uh, before we get into the DNA subscriptions, some of the new stuff that we've been doing at Cisco as part of uh, digital network architecture and what you mean might have been hearing in the various keynotes and such. So the first thing is, uh, why DNA and why now? So I think we are at an exciting time. You know, and through this week, uh, I've been talking to a lot of different customers, uh, different segments, you know, healthcare, government, uh, finance, and it's, it's always striking to me like uh, what you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know, we've just been asking about customers' environments, about, you know, tell me a little bit about your, you know, how many switches, routers, APs, and how many endpoints you guys are managing. And it's incredible, you know, I mean, and I always ask this question about, and okay, what's your IT staff like to manage all of this infrastructure? And the ratios are amazing. So right now, just uh, the previous customer I was talking to, he had an IT staff of about six people managing a healthcare environment of, you know, said close to about 100,000 endpoints, right? It's like unbelievable, it's just like mind boggling. And it's not just about, hey, I mean, you've got all these devices, but the environment that you're operating in, right? You know, we've got about doctors and nurses and this critical medical infrastructure, and then, you know, different types of, the new kinds of devices that are coming on uh, networks. Like somebody was saying, you know, uh, students bring in Alexas and Google Homes and expecting IT to all make it work on, on corporate networks. So, you know, this explosion of number of devices that's happening on networks, and more importantly, the security risks, because as, you know, you got more critical data that is coming on these networks, you know, there's, there's, there's always an opportunity for, uh, you know, uh, the bad guys to go exploit that. And yeah, that's also becoming front and center of uh, IT environments today. So even sort of uh, what people are saying is the networker's job is changing. At some point, it was all about connecting things together, and now it's about, hey, how do I lock things down uh, based on their security posture and such? And so towards that, you know, what we are trying to do with software-defined access is really redefine how we can really simplify networking for you so that you can actually spend more time focused on how do I secure my network? How do I enable connectivity in a much more simplified manner? How do I be uh, much more responsive, responsive to my business requirements and enable them to bring in more devices, enable them to uh, bring in more applications and not actually be worried about, oh, how do I take this device, which VLAN do I put it in, what subnet, what IP address, and you know how, do, how what's my ACLs look like, uh, and and you know get away from the day to day, right? And so that really is what we are trying to talk as part of the whole uh, aspect around intent-based networking. 
is how do I define what do I want to enable on my network in terms of a high level intent or a business policy? And you'll see that as part of the demo is when we define a policy, it's no longer defined in terms of a VLAN or a subnet or an IP ACL or, hey, you know, how do I route from uh, subnet A to subnet B? There's a controller for that. The controller, it knows your network, it knows sort of, uh, hey, these are like sort of the IP pools that I need to get defined. In the controller, you define saying that, hey, th these are my different virtual networks, my segments, my groups, and my policies that I need to define. And the controller can then instantiate all of that stuff on the network for you, right? That's the stuff, that, that's essentially the experience we're trying to deliver. So about, uh, so essentially intent-based networking is about, hey, you know, taking that business intent, having the controller automate all of that configuration out for you on the network, rather than you having to do it on a device-by-device, box-by-box basis. And then a key part of it is not just provisioning, a key part of it is also how you can now operate your network much more efficiently on a day-to-day -day basis. So as some would say, it's like, hey, it's the network that is slow, or hey, you know, I'm not able to connect to the internet. It's not always the network, right? It might be the application, could be the client, it could be authentication, could be a whole bunch of things. How do you make your day-to-day -day network operations much more efficient? That's where DNA Assurance can help get some data and insights from the network do some analytics, some, some long-term long trending, and actually help you uh, isolate issues much more quickly. So uh, let's take a step back and really look at the different portfolio for intent-based networking. It's really you know, for di uh, digital network architecture. We are primarily focused on the enterprise side of the house. So your campus networks, wired as well as wireless, as well as uh, branches. Um, we recently acquired a company called Webtela, which had its own SD-WAN solution, and we'll be rolling up uh, the Webtela SD-WAN solution as part of the digital network architecture as well. And then on your intent-based data center, uh, we have got Cisco um, ACI application centric infrastructure, and its own set of analytics as well as own, own automation with APIC. And then, as you heard at Cisco Live today, one of the key focus areas for us is enabling customers to embrace and adopt a multi-cloud world. So you'll find out increasingly that we're developing automation orchestration solutions that extend not only to your corporate IT, corporate enterprise networking, but also extend out to the public cloud. And so how do you do this intent-based networking all the way from your campus to your data center to maybe even a cloud environment? So for the purpose of this uh, discussion today, uh, I'll be primarily focusing on some of the innovations that we have been doing on the enterprise side of the house, but then Nada will also talk you about the DNA offers, uh, the licenses that you need to purchase to enable this functionality across um, uh, the entire portfolio. So our solution for intent-based networking in enterprise networks uh, for your campus, access, wired wireless, as well as branches, is software-defined access. Right? What software-defined access really enables is an identity-driven manner to enable segmentation in your campus environments. Right? It's a fabric architecture, but really what we are trying to solve for is how do you do turnkey segmentation in a really simple manner using the endpoint identity. And these technologies have existed for a while, right? I mean, uh, you have a whole bunch of network segmentation technologies from your VRFs, VLANs, MPLS, whatnot, uh, to make it all work today. But how do you do it in a manner that is really simple? And uh, the key thing here you'll find out is one of the things we are trying to drive is decouple network segmentation from your network design. Today, they are extremely intertightly coupled, right? You have, you have to create, like, let's say, guest access. How do you do it? You have to worry about a guest VLAN. You have to create a subnet for it. You have to worry about, hey, how am I going to route, route all this traffic from, uh, let's say, the access layer or, or whatever, the wireless LAN controller, all the way to the DMZ and bring it out there. It's all very tightly coupled to your network topology, right? And so anytime you got to make it, have to make a change to your policy, you got to worry about your network design and how you've uh, structured your existing IP schema. 
So all of this is really complex. It's, and even when you have to deploy it, you know, box by box basis, uh, got to go repeat the same VRF configuration of, across uh, 50, 100 network devices. Not fun, right? You all got better things to do than that. So that's what the controllers out there to do, is let you automate all that stuff out. So the next thing after uh, enabling uh, turnkey network segmentation is uh, what we are trying to enable in enterprises is a fabric architecture. What does a fabric architecture give you? It gives you uh, the flexibility and the simplicity to enable that any-to-any -any kind of connectivity scenario that you might be needing for. So a lot of, for example, medical devices, they come with static IPs, right? And for that, you know, you, for, for example, have to carve out a different subnet. You gotta worry about, hey, this device needs to be able to broadcast across, for example, the entire campus to another device. How do I now have to stretch that VLAN across, have to maintain a spanning tree instance, and have to you know, do some special one-offs for these special one-off kind of devices? And more and more on enterprise networks, what, we, what we've been hearing is the kind of the way the kind of devices that are connecting to enterprise networks are no longer just desktops and PCs and you know mobile phones that are connecting. You got everything from your building management, HVAC systems, uh, surveillance, whatnot, and all of these things might have some particular unique connectivity requirements. How do you enable that in a very simple manner? I think this is what uh, the fabric provides. And how do you uh, do this in an extremely scalable manner as well? Because you might as well have created a very large layer two domain, but then now you've got to worry about you know, scalability, you've got to worry about resiliency, you know, broadcast storms and all that stuff. So what we have done as part of software-defined access is standardized on a layer three design, which allows you to scale extremely flexibly. You no longer have to worry about spanning tree and broadcast storms and any of that. But because it's a fabric, you can now very easily stretch subnets across the entire network, no matter how big it is, and not have to worry about how I'm going to route from point A to point B, because all of that is taken care of by the controller with a centralized control plane. Right? And the third aspect is, of course, you know, how do you get data from the network to be able to troubleshoot that and monitor that in a much more efficient manner? So we'll see a quick demo of software-defined access right after this. Uh, but before that, we also want to talk about, uh, you know, how do I not just very, uh, how do I uh, not just very easily provision these network services? How do I actually be able to monitor my network, what's going on, and in case there is any uh, issues that are there, when the client is complaining that I'm not able to connect or the network is slow? How can I actually be able to troubleshoot that very easily? And in fact, even before the client complains, how can I actually be proactive about figuring out what's really going on in my network? How's my client performance look like? How are my applications performing? Those are some of the things we have built into DNA Center as well. And the other very cool thing that we do as part of uh, you know, DNA and the new Cat 9K series switches, Catalyst 9000 series switches, is this capability called encrypted traffic analytics. This goes back to how do you secure your infrastructure. So as you might know, uh, the world is going encrypted, right? You look at Google, you look at Facebook, uh, you know, everybody's uh, turning on uh, uh, TLS by default. And most of your traffic, uh, you, from a security perspective, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, a, a black hole, right? And you, you have some solutions such as being able to you know, put everything through an uh, SSL proxy, be able to get the certificates, decrypt and inspect it. That's going to uh, put your network performance for a toss. Right? So there's always a balance between network performance and security. And for the first time, what we've been able to do is be able to look at threats in encrypted traffic without actually having to decrypt that traffic. So the way we are able to do that is through certain mechanisms uh, from uh, exporting NetFlow uh, from the Catalyst 9000 switches, which has got some local analytics, be able to correlate that with, correlate that with machine learning from the cloud, um, and integrate that using uh, the Cisco StealthWatch solution for NetFlow analytics, be able to actually detect threats in encrypted traffic. 
And that's one of the key things that is offered as part of the uh, DNA software license that we'll talk about very soon. So with that, uh, I want to show you a quick demo of what these capabilities look like and then turn it over to Nada. Right. So let me just log into my laptop here. All right. So this is DNA Center. This is uh, sort of the control center for your network infrastructure, enterprise network. And um, this is, let me just log in here. And yeah, so DNA Center comes as an appliance. It's really uh, doing more of the management functionality. It's really not in the data path of the network itself. Um, it's really like, think about it as a successor for Cisco Prime, if you would. Uh, but it's really the way the experience has been structured in DNA Center, you'll notice is, uh, you know, we really try to focus on the simplicity of user experience and making sure that, you know, we are really focused on um, the end outcomes that the customers are trying to achieve versus uh, how they achieve it using from a technology perspective. So the first thing you'll notice in DNA Center is divided into four areas. It's uh, design, policy, provision, and assurance. Uh, the design part is really about you know, setting up your global network settings, uh, things like organizing your network in terms of uh, various sites and uh, various site profiles. So you can, for example, say that um, you know, I've got a site in San Jose, and then within that, you know, I've got hey, you know, a certain building with some floors, and you can even import your floor maps, you know, access point placements, and you know, get, get some heat maps out of that. So that is some of the functionality that has now been integrated into DNA Center. So I don't have an image for a floor map, but um, anyways, that's the idea. You can very easily also create uh, new sites, uh, new buildings for a geolocation, and it knows exactly where that site is located. What you can also do is, based off the profile of the site, you can automate deploying your network infrastructure at a particular site. So I can say that I've got a site in particular California headquarters. Um, you know, it's a Catalyst 9300 versus in a branch, I might have, let's say, a Catalyst 2960X or an ISR 4300. So but depending on where the device is connected, I can specify that, oh, you know, for this ISR 4300, it's, uh, you know, this particular iOS software that I've standardized on. This is my uh, bootstrap configuration for connecting to my van. And all of that stuff is going to get automated out for you as that device gets connected. So it provides you with that plug and play functionality as well out of the box. Right. And then we've got certain configurations that we can do even for wireless. So for example, defining what your uh, SSIDs are, what kind of authentication you want to use on your SSIDs, and then what kind of, um, uh, for example, uh, AAA servers you want to use. You can connect to your AAA server, DHCP, DNS servers, um, and you know, some basic stuff that you've set up your network as. We also have got integrations with IP address management. Uh, so we integrate with InfoBlocks and BlueCat. So you can much more easily manage your IP address pools and uh, synchronize them between DNS Center and uh, those third party solutions. So this is this was all like the basic stuff, like the the base automation, what you do on a typical device uh, day to day basis, day to day basis, and all of this functionality is part of the uh, DNA Essentials package, right? This is essentially what uh, some of the basic uh, base automation functionality, uh, and now following that, after you have got your network set up in a certain manner, you got your configuration standardized, and your day to day network uh, changes that could be now automated through the controller, I want to show you some of the policy and assurance capabilities that are now part of the assurance uh, packages. So these are some of the advanced functions that DNA Center is able to do that otherwise you would not have been able to accomplish in the same manner in a traditional network. Right? So the first thing we talked about is identity-based segmentation. right? And to do identity-based segmentation, uh, we go to policies. It's all uh, policy-driven uh, mechanism to do segmentation. And towards that, we have got this construct called virtual networks. Virtual network is essentially how you can uh, take your existing physical network and carve out like logical physical blocks, you know, just the way you uh, might have been using 
VRFs. We, use that, we call this concept called virtual networks. The key difference being it doesn't matter. Uh, you no longer have to worry about the IP addressing, creating of the VLANs, the subnetting, the routing. Uh, all of that is completely automated and abstracted out for you. It's extremely centered on the identity of the endpoints and how those endpoints need to be segmented. And that's ex exactly the experience that you see here. Right? You don't see any of uh, the networking constructs around VLANs and the subnets. Instead, what you see is a gr logical grouping of your endpoints of your network. And now you can define, hey, which endpoint has got business talking to which other endpoint? So what we have done here is really integrated with Cisco's identity services engine. Cisco's ICE uh, is our uh, identity solution that enables you to uh, you know, think, do things like profiling of your endpoints, uh, authentication, it can interface with Active Directory to take some of those Active Directory groups and map them into logical groups here. And then you, using that, using an API-based integration between DNA Center and ICE, we have all of the endpoints uh, of what you might have in your organization organized as uh, these logical groups. And I can define very easily. Let's say that uh, you know, I'm a hospital and then you know, I'm trying to um, create like uh, a certain corporate access for all of my uh, nurses and doctors. So I can say this is for corp and medical. And then I can say that, hey, you know, as doctors connect to the network and I've got, let's say, some um, medical records, electronic medical records as well that doctors would need access to. Um, there's some nurses, I got some doctors here. So these are, and, you know, some of the doctors could be using BYOD. So. Uh, what this experience is allowing you to do is saying that as a device connects to the network, I can identify that device based off a variety of criteria. It could be using certificates, could be using Active Directory logins, could be profiling, MAC address database, whatnot. I identify what is connecting to my network, and based on that, I put that device in the appropriate virtual network segment. Right? So that way, all of that, uh, all of those devices, all of these users have are on their own logical entity, and I can create, for example, let's say I'm also doing some other IoT projects uh, where I've got some like lights and HVAC systems. Uh, you know, it's got its own separate virtual network, and these two virtual networks are logically isolated from each other, right? An HVAC system or a lighting system, no doctor or nurse ever needs to access that, and vice versa. So these are two completely logical entities, completely segmented out from each other, and that's one of the ways I can achieve that very easily. So you notice here, I haven't even touched the network. I haven't even worried about what my IP addressing schema is, uh, you know, where I'm configuring my routing. All of that stuff, the controller can handle all of that seamlessly. Right? Yes? Yes. Right, so the question was, right now we said that these groups are coming from ICE, Identity Service Engine. The question was, if I don't have ICE, can I still get these groups? So today, DNA Center only integrates with Identity Services Engine. Uh, we are looking at uh, some integrations in the future besides ident ICE as well. But for today, uh, you require Identity Service Engine to get any of those groups functionality. Today, yes. Yeah. Great question. So that's a perf uh, so the question was how do I communicate uh, control communication within a virtual segment? And that's actually uh, it's a great segue into the next thing that I want to show you. Is I can actually very easily now create a policy between not just uh, like uh, macro segmentation that, hey, these are my two macro virtual network segments. Within a virtual network, I can be more granular and lock down who can communicate to whom and over which ports and protocols. So I can say that, hey, you know, HVACs and lighting systems, 
two independent entities, right? They kind of all belong to the same kind of IoT logical network segment, but there's no business reason for them to talk to each other, right? So what I can do is I can say a contract, I can add in the contract saying that HVAC systems talking to a lighting system, um, it's, uh, I want to deny access to uh, these two groups of users. And the key thing again here is it doesn't matter which, where these devices are connected on, which VLAN, which some they're connected on, this is a policy that gets implemented and enforced across the entire network fabric, right? So think about almost taking your entire network infrastructure, wireless routing, uh, network uh, switching, and almost converting it into a stateless firewall that is implementing all of this policy-based segmentation. Right. Yes. 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 That is the default way in which um, we have defined. Uh, because essentially, that's how customers, uh, enterprise networks operate their networks today. Is people generally talk to each other over the same VLANs and whatnot. So we wanted to preserve that same experience and not just start off with like a whitelist model where everybody's default deny. That would have been uh, pretty chaotic. <laughs> So uh, we started off with like a blacklist model where you have to actually go ahead and explicitly start creating those deny policies in, in here. Virtual networks by default are completely isolated. That's like just how VRFs work. Yeah. Uh, uh, contracts are uh, unidirectional, so you have to define contracts in each manner. I think there's a uh, bidirectional checkbox as well. You check that box and then you, it then creates a bidirectional contract. All right, so that was you know, just showing you how very easily you can create um, uh, policies in this environment. And again, this is part of the uh, DNA assurance license level. Right? And then the key part is like, hey, after I've done this, after I've created all these policies, how do I ensure that the network is uh, performing as expected, right? So you've got, uh, that, that's where DNA assurance comes in. This is also an advantage capability. Uh, it's segmented into two parts. We've got network assurance and client assurance, right? Network assurance is really like, you know, how's my network infrastructure performing? Essentially, uh, like the general health of my network, traditionally what you might have been monitoring for, things like CPU, memory, interface utilization, interface statistics, uh, counters, errors, uh, those kinds of things that you typically find out from the network devices. So this is what it's showing is that, hey, you know, the, my wireless routers, distribution core switches are generally doing fine, and maybe a couple of my access switches are having a few problems, right? So you can dig down, look at, hey, you know, which, uh, which of those switches are not doing well, and what's going on there. But the more interesting part, really, is the client health, because troubleshooting client performance is, is, is like black magic, right? It's, it, it's, you might have to time travel, the problem might have not occurred, the problem could be the client driver, it could be in the application, it could be anywhere. But uh, you know, generally what I've heard from customers, it's the network that is first to blame, and it's the network that is always guilty and less proven innocent, right? So this is, the, you know, we had actually some pretty interesting stickers that we handed out last year for DNA assurance, which is, it's not the network problem, and I can prove it. So this is um, DNA assurance is essentially uh, a tool to enable you to prove that it's not the network, or hey, if it's the network, what exactly is, where exactly is the problem, right? So it gives you a really detailed example, uh, understanding of like, not just like long-term trending of how your client performance generally is, and so you can see like, some macro-level statistics of uh, you know, the health of your clients, and uh, you know, it seems like 90% of my clients are, are doing fine, but about 10% of them are having some, uh, some kind of performance issues. And so if I want to look at which are those clients, I can very easily drill down into, hey, which are the clients that are perhaps not doing so well on my network? This itself is like a very easy way to isolate it. Hey, is it those new medical devices, those new laptops that uh, were particularly acting slow, or like, hey, you know, I was just talking to another customer yesterday, he was saying, 
you know, th there was some certain phones that had certain like dot eleven AC chips uh, that were performing a little differently because they had some driver issues. The older phones used to look fine, work fine, but these newer phones had these particular problems. And I had to like, you know, uh, in case now you have to actually uh, prove to somebody that it is only that model of the phone that's the problem. It's not the my Wi-Fi setting that's the problem. How do you do that in a traditional network? So this is a nice way to show you that, hey, you know, based off all the analytics that the controller is collecting, I can actually pinpoint you the types of devices that are having the problem and who those users are. So you know, based off the integration with ICE, for example, we even know, for example, who's the user, uh, where they're connected, IP address, MAC address, what type of device they're connected on. Right? And I can very easily drill down on a particular client and what exactly is going on with this client. So I can see in this client, uh, that client was doing fine for a while, but for the last day or so has been having some problems. Uh, well, what are the types of problems that this client has been having? So, you know, uh, when it's trying to access this particular application, it's getting some extra latency. When it's trying to connect, uh, it's having some, uh, some, you know, it's taking some extra time. And so to do that, it even gives you like sort of uh, not just that these are the macro issues that the client is seeing, but also what is really going on in terms of, for example, all of the different control plane events, right? So for example, the client was able to successfully get DHCP'd. It was able to, for example, authenticate very successfully in the past, but right now it is, you know, in, uh, over the last day or so in terms of authentication, Looks like in terms uh, when it was trying to authenticate, there was an authentication timeout for some reason. And the same thing was happening when it was trying to roam as well. So that's why maybe that's one of the root causes of why the client is experiencing some uh, delayed performance. So that's just an example of you know, how DNA assurance can help you really simplify your day-to-day -day tasks and actually do it in a manner that is taking a lot of the grunt work of manually logging into systems, looking at devices on a you know on a point by point basis, really looking at it uh, as an aggregate and helping you pinpoint where those anomalies are to help you root cause those issues quicker. Yes. Yes, and actually that's one of the key new things that we actually introduced. I'm just trying to figure out where that would be located. Uh, all right. Uh, all right, so you know that is actually a new functionality that we just introduced. So um, I don't know exactly where it's located. Yes, but it can actually take packet captures and actually correlate those packet captures with events, and actually do it in a live manner. So even as the client might roam across the access points, because I'm taking a packet capture on a per client basis, no matter where the client roams across, I am able to persist that packet capture session. Yeah, try doing that by. Uh, you know, hand or even like scripting that out, right? So, uh, and, and the very cool thing is, you know, based on that packet capture, I can correlate it to events. So I, in case I'm trying to troubleshoot for authentication, it very intelligently filters for only the authentication-related traffic across that entire session. So this is very cool stuff you can do there. Yes, yes, absolutely, so, right? So that was a quick demo of some of the you know, fun stuff that you can do with DNA Center. This is just a start. Uh, we are really excited about where we are taking this forward and uh, you know, how we purchase this. I guess that's where I'll hand off to Nada to talk go. about some of the licensing here. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, so right now, DNA Center today supports 25,000 clients, 25K. Uh, that is that's the scale today. Yes, yeah, so it could be client, could be connected, no matter uh, how. Could be wired or wireless. It's twenty five thousand clients, and then uh, on the scale front, we have about we can support up to one thousand network devices. Yeah, end twenty five thousand endpoints and one thousand network devices. Uh, that is uh, switches, routers, uh, wireless. Uh, yes. It's a physical appliance. Yeah, yeah, prepackaged physical. Is that physical in the sense of a controller or is it just a network? 
uh, right now we only support like a single model where you can only have a single uh, DNA center appliance or a cluster of it, and the scale for both of those is 25,000 endpoints. We support a cluster of three DNA appliances. Yeah. Uh, 25,000 uh, client endpoints. Uh, yeah, about 1,000 network devices. Yes, the cluster, right now, we are, the next thing that we are working on is enhancing the cluster scale. Right now, the focus is on making the cluster highly available. Uh, and the next focus in the next six months is going to be on increasing uh, through cluster and client scale. Uh-huh. Yeah, so what we do have, yeah, so what we do have is certain ROI calculators, uh, ROI uh, calculators, which where you plug in your, you know, existing, what does your environment look like, how many devices you have, how much IT staff you have, some of the key requirements of your organization, and then it's going to give you the uh, analysis of, you know, how does this cost uh, compare to the cost that you're going to save by adopting this. So, so yeah, this is what we. Sh uh yeah. So obviously, you wouldn't deploy this uh, just for one branch. I mean, this is like the central entity that you can now use to manage like literally hundreds of branches together. And so, when with one single DNA center appliance, you know, yeah. So we do support ISR 4Ks. Uh, on the switching side, we can support a lot of the existing CAT 3Ks. Um, and even though on the wireless side, we support all of the .11 AC, Wave 1, Wave 2 series access points. So uh, the thing is, you don't always need a completely new infrastructure. We can actually make this work with a lot of existing infrastructure. Uh, actually, majority of the existing infrastructure we've been shipping for the last three, four years. So in case you did a network refresh over the last three, four years, there's a very highly, highly likely chance you can use that existing network to run this. So for the new switches, for the, for the new infrastructure, we are completely moving to the essentials and advantage model of licensing. So if you wanted to branch customer R, you, you couldn't support DNA center and IP. You can support the wireless deployment. Yeah. Purchasing expenses. Yeah, you can just start off with essentials. And that is, again, if you look at the price, yes. And we have priced it accordingly, right? We have done, like, uh, we actually priced it really aggressively. So you're actually getting much more value at that same price point. Okay. So. No. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Uh, minimum requirement with APIC. Okay, so I'm mostly from the enterprise side. I'm not as familiar with the, uh, okay, there you go.
All right. Sounds good. So we'll transition to Nada to talk a little more deeper about licensing and. You um, bet. I'm going to switch perfect. back yes. to. Uh, and that's. And I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Oh yeah. Here we go. Everyone. Yeah. All right. So after folks hear about a lot of these capabilities, they often ask, "How do how do I get them? How do I consume them?" And that's the part I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the software licensing that enables these. I'll primarily talk about Cisco One, but not entirely. There are a number of alternatives, and I'll talk about the differences in value and function between them. Let me start out by just asking a question. How many of you are familiar with Cisco One? A good number, but, but, but not everyone. Okay, so just in a nutshell, Cisco One is, has been around for about three years. Uh, there's about 24,000 customers using it. 99% of the Fortune 100 use it. So the point being, it's very popular and it's not new. However, a lot of new capabilities, like what Vibov's been talking about, have been, have been filtered in through um, new releases of Cisco One. In a nutshell, what it is, is it's, it's a set of software suites. Um, and they, they bring a number of value points, but I'll point out three. Number one, it's, it's a simple way to collect solutions around the key infrastructure needs you have, one SKU versus buying a lot of different products often with better together pricing. Um, it offers investment protection to customers by uh, allowing them access to new innovations, upgrades, et cetera. And thirdly, the licenses are not tied to the specific hardware. So as you change your to newer generations of hardware, the licenses are portable. The, th these value points kind of combine together to help make Cisco One more simple, uh, more flexible, and with, often with better TCO for customers. When it first came out, it was perpetual licenses. Um, although increasingly over the last year, we've been rolling out a uh, series of subscription suites that, that bring to life these capabilities Vibov talked about. You can see that the suites are available across wireless switching routing, data center networking, as well as data center cloud compute. Most of my comments today will center around switching just because of time. We don't have a lot of time, but I will try to correlate some of the concepts I talk about with the licensing to the other infrastructure areas as well. You may have heard about these subscription suites coming out over about the last year. Starting in June of 2017, we announced the first set of subscription software suites for switching, followed a couple months later by similar suites for wireless, and then earlier this year for routing. The rows, if you will, or the little bubbles, are just to denote that in all of these infrastructure areas, there are a, a, a series of subscription suites, different costs and different value points, and I'll go into that. This is that same slide, but now you see extended on the end that recently we've, we've announced subscription suites for data center networking as well for the Nexus 9K. They're structured a little bit differently based on the architectural needs being different, um, but, but in all cases, we're trying to build simplicity and consistency in the offers that we're bringing across, uh, across the infrastructure areas. Before I show you details about the uh, offers, I want to just touch on this concept of tiers, and, and many of you have asked questions about them. In all the subscription suites, you're going to have an essentials tier, which is base, network, automation, and monitoring and an advanced tier, one or more subscription offers for advanced. All the, the capabilities that Vibov talked about, SD access, assurance, encrypted traffic analytics, through DNA Center, that's all going to be in the uh, advantage level. So let me just show how these tiers are manifested with the 9K. And a, a good way to do that is to look, about, look at what you're familiar with. If you were buying a 6K or a 4K, everyone's familiar with the three different levels of software. IP base, uh, LAN base, IP base, IP services. On a 9K, instead of thinking in those three tiers, it's now two tiers. And I just mentioned that on the previous slide. On the bottom is the essentials, base network automation and monitoring, and advantage at the top. Within each tier, the reason you see those two boxes is there's two elements. There's a software subscription piece, which is the blue piece. There's also the base iOS that comes with the switch that's a perpetual license, more like what you're familiar with, that comes with that as well. So now let me kind of talk about the subscription offers themselves, so you can see the difference between them. 
using switching as an example. Three different offers. We kind of call them good, better, best, left to right. They're all subscription offers that are offered three, five, or seven year. And they're nested SKUs, which means as you move to the right, it's inclusive of that which is to the left. Um, software support is included within any of them. So on the left, DNA Essentials is the question. Is it single or on a 9K, you do need to buy one of the subscription suites. But when you buy that, if you buy DNA Essentials, which is a base automation, you do get this perpetual piece that, 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 that lives with the switch. So if in three years, you bought a three-year subscription, and for whatever reason you didn't want to renew it, you could still use the switch, but not with the advanced functionality. Correct. Correct. It doesn't, the switch does not become a burden that doesn't do anything. Yes, with wireless, yes. Um, so I said good, better, best. So to tell you kind of the difference between them. So you know this is base automation and monitoring essentials. When you go to DNA Advantage, you get the assurance capability that Vibov talked about, and you get basic software to find access. But what you don't get is the advanced security of things like encrypted traffic analytics and the full function SD access. If you go to the best alternative, Cisco One, it's preferred because anything that you've heard about from the DNA perspective here at this conference, you can get through Cisco One Advantage. Cisco One Advantage includes DNA Advantage and DNA Essentials, as well as iSpace, iSplus, and StealthWatch. And it's the addition of those licenses that gives you the encrypted traffic analytics capability, and it also uses, I think Vibov talked about, the enhanced profiling, identity-based profiling capability of ICE to make fuller function SD access. So it's for that reason you may or may not have heard, we'll talk about DNA advantages being SDA enabled and Cisco One advantages being DNA um, or SDA ready, meaning it's got everything you need. If you, for example, were a customer that already had ICE or StealthWatch, you may go for the DNA, DNA Advantage alternative. From a pricing perspective, Vibov mentioned that. Um, for customers who are used to buying land base, that's about equivalent to a three-year subscription of the essential subscription package. If you're used to buying IP base, as about 80% of our customers are, that's roughly equivalent to a three-year subscription of the uh, Advantage package. It's IP services functionality, so it's more functionality for about the same price. Now, as soon as folks see this, they often ask this next question, which is help me compare the price between the good, better, best, better, best alternatives, the uh, SDA enabled and SDA ready. This is a five-year total cost of ownership list price analysis, and what it's showing is the hardware, the bottom part of the graph is the same. Therefore, the hardware support, base operating system support is the same. The difference is in that software stack. It's about a 5% premium for Cisco One Advantage, but it's considerably more value. Remember, that's coming with the ICE base and ICE Plus and Stealth Watch licenses. So not a big price premium for significantly more value. Um, when I talked in the beginning, or one of my comments was about investment protection, for customers who've invested in Cisco One in the past, remember I said it has been around for a while as perpetual licenses, there are investment protection plans to make it easy for customers to get to essentials. The net of what this says is, if you invested in Cisco One perpetual prior to the subscriptions being announced for switching, that was June of 2017, you're entitled to a no-cost three-year subscription to um, essentials or advantage, whichever one corresponds to what you had first. So I'll just give one example. Light blue, if a customer invested in Cisco One Foundation, that's the, the uh, kind of basic Cisco One Perpetual, they're entitled to a three-year subscription to DNA Essentials. And again, that's if they purchase that perpetual license prior to the subscriptions being announced. Sure. Yep. It goes up to three years, pa good question, past the time it was announced. So if you're interested in it, you know, it's to your benefit to kind of do it earlier rather than later, just you have more time 
to take advantage of the value. I'm s could you just repeat that? I didn't hear. Um, yes, for wireless. I had my head around switching. Yes, for Cisco One Advantage for wireless, it does come with that. That's right. Right, not s Stealth Watch, but ICE. Okay. Um, this is merely to, to make that point, I think I may have made earlier, is that with these subscription offers, we're trying to create more simplicity and more consistency across the infrastructure area. So whether it's switching wireless or WAN, you have these good, better, best alternatives, DNA Essentials, DNA Advantage, and Cisco One Advantage. And they're slightly different in what they do based on what the infrastructure capability is, um, but we have that. On the bottom is just to show, um, we just came out with subscription offers for data center networking for the Nexus 9K. Instead of good, better, best, it's better, best, but it's still this notion of subscription licenses and those tiers, Essentials and Advantage tiers. From a technical support perspective, um, the top is dealing with software support, top row, bottom with hardware and iOS support. The key point is that with any subscription you get from Cisco, those that we've talked about today, DNA Essentials Advantage and Cisco One Advantage, or any others, software support is included. Uh, tax support, software download, knowledge base, that's, that's all included in it. That's not a separate purchase as it used to be, software support or Swiss. On the bottom, for the hardware and the base iOS, there's a couple alternatives. They're optional. SmartNet Total Care, you may get support from your favorite partner, or um, solution support. Solution support is kind of like a, I don't want to call it a superset, but, it's, but you get a central point of contact, a quarterback, if you will, to coordinate support across multiple product teams, hardware, software. So that's a higher function support you may want to consider. We find that when customers do choose that, again, they're all optional, um, problems are resolved around 43% faster, so you might want to consider that. We hope you've been interested in some of these topics. Um, these are some good sources to find out more information. What Vibov talked about, SDA, 9K, as well as those capabilities across wireless and WAN are at the first link. If you're interested in data center, a gentleman asked a question about that. Nexus 9K, the subscriptions for that, second link, and Cisco One Advantage, um, Cisco, Cisco One Advantage across Perpetual One subscription at the bottom. Before everyone runs away, I'll do the plug you hear in all the sessions. Please do take the time to fill out the evaluation. We really do listen to them. The fact that Vibov spent more time in the demo was because folks made comments when, when this session was done in, whoops, sorry about that, Cisco, Cisco Live Barcelona. So we'd appreciate you doing that. As you continue your training, if you have questions, um, come to where we are in World of Solutions. We can answer, a lot of folks there to answer your questions. To tell you where to go, if you walk in and you're standing in front of the knock with the you know, big lights, you're standing in an area where there's some very good demonstrations of the DNA provision, automated provisioning that Vibov talked about, as well as an assurance demo. Um, I really like the assurance demo because it's live of this session. There's 26 some thousand people there. If you're logged onto the network, they can find you uh, in this demo and kind of show you the performance. It's very cool. And, and we're also there to talk about the licensing as well. So uh, feel free to come by. Um, we hope you've enjoyed it. Stay after for questions if you'd like, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.